You're listening to Jones's Jukebox, KLOS. That was sweet. Love is like oxygen. Then we started off with Foxy Jen. Fo huh. Follow the leader. Mm. Uh, Morgan Cable from GPL is with us today. That's oh. JPL. Yes, that's JPL. Hello. How are you, love? I'm doing great. How are you guys? I'm good. I'm a bit tired today. Sorry to hear that. You should you should come direct direct it more. T turn, Hello. Turn the mic towards you a bit. There you go. All right. Oh, well, that does sound better. That's Thank better. you. I'm knackered today, so forgive me. No problem. That means tired. Okay. Good. In English terms. <laughs> um, so, Jet Propulsion Lab. Is that up in Pasadena? Yes, sir. That's up in Pasadena. So you go there every day. I do. And, and what does your day look like? Give us a rate. What does a regular day look like for you up there? Well, what it time do you show up? Eight o'clock? Usually around there. Yeah. Between eight and nine. And, but the work doesn't really stop when you leave. So I'll end up, I don't know, reading papers or, or working on a few things even when I go home at night. And what, and what is a, 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 a usual day? What are you doing? You're trying to figure out how to uh, make things work? or? Yeah, a lot of that and trying to figure out what questions to ask. So a lot of my job as a scientist is trying to, to figure out, is there life on Mars? Could there be life elsewhere in the solar system or in the universe? And once we come up with those questions, try to figure out the best way to come up with answers yeah. to those questions. So what do you think? Do you think there is life on Mars? I think that there are places on Mars where we know for sure life on Earth, certain types of what we call extremophiles, life that can live in crazy places like Antarctica, there are some places on Mars where they could survive. The temperatures are about the same as what we see on Earth in those, those crazy places. So there are certain kinds of life that could be there, do and we're looking for them. Do you think there's any oceans up there? Oh, I know. Well, we have a lot of strong evidence that there are oceans out there, not on Mars, but on other places further out in the solar system. Yeah. There are a couple of moons around Jupiter and Saturn. We call them icy worlds because they have a lot of ice, but they also have a lot of liquid water. And we've got some pretty strong evidence from a couple of spacecraft that we've sent out there. Uh, spacecraft like the Cassini mission, which is in orbit around Saturn, that have found oceans of liquid water underneath some of these moons. It's a pretty interesting place to look for life. At least I think so. But you think it's life as, as opposed to you could open the shuttle door and walk out there? Or is it going to be all like, you know, you're, you're drop dead the minute you walk out if you didn't have your spacesuit on? Most of these places, the oceans are underneath a shell of ice. So you definitely need some kind of a submarine or something to get down there if you mm. wanted to, to take a person and go and explore it. And there are other things that we would have to worry about, too. Things like radiation. Right. Jupiter's got a lot of radiation around there. So there are some things that we would need to figure out first before we send people. So at JPL, at the Jet Propulsion Lab, we send robots instead, or at least as a first step. Um, hopefully, we'll be sending people there one day as well. And from a robot, you could tell if, uh, if it, from, from information, not obviously not the way they're feeling because they're metal. Right. Uh, but the information, that is they, do they have computers on them to tell you if it's livable or a bunch of other different information? Yeah, they definitely do. So they've got special instruments that can look at if there's an atmosphere, like places like Titan. It's a moon around Saturn. has a thicker atmosphere than Earth. So we know all about that atmosphere from some of the robotic spacecraft we sent there. Uh, we can study the chemicals and the, the salts and things that are present on the surface to try to understand if life could use those, if life could be there. And we can even include some instruments to look for life itself. It's Titan. That's a newer one that was just discovered not so long ago, isn't it? That one, it was discovered a while ago, but we didn't get to go visit it until pretty recently. So this Cassini, mention, Cassini mission I mentioned before, uh, it took a lot of images and, and studied Titan from orbit. It orbited around Saturn and then swung by Titan a bunch of times. It's still there doing that. And then we collaborated with the European Space Agency to land a probe on Titan. It's the first one to ever land on a place that far away. Yeah. And that one studied the atmosphere. It had parachutes, and it sort of gently glided down to the surface. So that the atmosphere there is so thick that if you were a human and you were standing on the surface and you had wings and you flapped your arms, you could fly, which is pretty cool. Wow. Except it's really cold and there's not a lot of oxygen there, so that, that might be a problem. So all them computers... 
they just died up there, right? They, well, we engineered them to survive for a certain amount of time, and they all absolutely did that. Some of them survive a lot longer. Yeah. We've got some rovers on Mars that have been there way longer than we initially expected them to. And so we're, that's one of the great things we like to do at JPL is sort of push the, the limits of engineering and science. That's why it's so fun to work there. Wow. So metal obviously survives up there then. Mm -hmm. And things that, you know, you can have things that move around yep. that survive up there. So is that good news? That is good news. And that's what we use to, you know, on Mars and on some of these, these icy moons that are further out in the solar system, we're engineering ways to, to dig into the surface or maybe even get to those oceans underneath. We're going to have to find a way to either dig or drill or somehow get a submarine down underneath that ice shell into that ocean one day. So we're working on some concepts for that that will, you know, be in the future, not immediately right now, but we're, we're definitely working on it. So wh why do you think it's important to find out about other planets? Do you think we're going to have to end up leaving here at some point because we're going to make it knackered? <laughs> is, that, is that another true English term? Yeah, like where we've just completely destroyed it and you can't survive here anymore. I mean, is that the goal? It's something we think about. I mean, uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson, I think, put it pretty well. He's a, a famous physicist. He yeah. said, you know, every time a, a meteorite or a meteor comes screaming kind of close to Earth, it's sort of the universe's way of saying, how's that space program coming along? Yeah. And, I mean, the dinosaurs, extinctions, things like that happen. So and that could happen to us. It could. Meaning. So no matter what we are or are not doing to our planet, we got to think about sort of in the, the cosmic perspective of things that some meteor could come through. And if we're just a one planet civilization, that could be it. And I don't know about you, but I don't, don't want to, you know, think about that I don't want to put all of our eggs in one basket. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I would definitely miss it would be a drag if we all disappeared <laughs> all the, but that would be something where it hit one side, then it have to work its way around, right? If a meteor not everyone's gonna be dead in a second. Or is that possible? You know, I'm not sure, but I imagine it depends a lot on how big that meteor might be. And one of the things that we do at NASA is we do the survey of the sky looking for things like that, just to make sure that if there is something coming, we know about it, and if there's something we can do about it. I don't think there is, though. Is if, if a meteor was coming here, and they say it was going to be here in three weeks, what are you going to do? What, what, what is anyone going to do? That's a really good question, and that's why I think the more that we can work to learn about those types of events and try to prepare for them, the better off we'll be. Yeah. I hope it happens the day after I die. Really? That meteor comes and blows it all up. I hope not. I wouldn't want to experience that. I wouldn't want to either. What would it be, uh, a meteor? Would it be like, what? how would it work? if a, I mean, there's been meteors that, that have been dropped here, right? There's one in Arizona. Sure. That's obviously a meteor, that big one. It's a mile round, isn't it? Uh, that's right. In the, it's called, what's it called? It's called, uh, it's right in the middle of Arizona. I don't remember the name of that crater, but there are a bunch of craters it's called, all over. It's called something crater, isn't it? That's right. Mm -hmm. But that, but that, so was that a small crater in comparison? You know, I, I don't really know. I mean, I'm, I don't study craters specifically. Yeah. I, I study more life and, and where life could exist and that kind of stuff. Yeah. But I imagine that one wasn't big enough to really be a bother. Otherwise, we wouldn't be here. Well, maybe that was the one. The, I think the one for the dinosaurs was, yeah, was in that? the Yucatan Peninsula. I'm pretty sure they narrowed it down to, to that location. I don't remember how big it was. Um, but th there are things like that that we have to think about. I like to think more on the positive side of I things. Know. Like, is there life out there in the universe? That kind of stuff. Yeah. Do you think there's aliens? I think that the universe is a really, really big place. And one thing that we're learning is that even in our own solar system, there are other places like Mars or Europa or Enceladus, other moons where life could exist it's as we know it. So they sound like cars. Yeah. Europa. Oh, what was yeah. the other one? Enceladus. It sounds like cars. They're named after uh, usually ancient Greek or Roman gods. Is that how you come up with the names for them? Who Sometimes. comes up with the names for them? There's a whole like committee, the international committee that comes up with all these sorts of names. And it depends on where you are. Like certain places will have themes. I know the, the Pluto system, they have sort of a, 
kind of a, a morbid sort of hell type theme. So there are things called Erebus, which is that that's the giant three headed dog and and Ceres and, and all sorts of cool things like that all over in the solar system that they're all their names come from people thinking, OK, well, what would be neat? And then they, they sort of come to the committee and the committee gives them a vote. Yes or no. And it's I bet kind of a neat process. I bet there's some people who get into it. They I want to call it this. No, I want to call it this. Well, you can't. I think the only rule is you can't name it after yourself. I think that's one rule. But if you wanted to name something after somebody else, you might be able to do that. What if you was Richard Branson and you put in a billion dollars to help? Could you get? His, could he name a planet after him? That's a good the question. Branson? I don't know. That's a real good question. But isn't there that website where you can name a star after somebody or something? I think. Name a star. After yeah, somebody. it's supposed to be really romantic. You didn't do that. I haven't done any, that yet. Any no. love in your life? Oh well. No, I don't have love. You're in welcome. My life. You know, Valentine's Day is coming up in a few months. Yeah. Or Christmas. You could do that as a nice Christmas present. Ah. Uh, no, it's all right. I'll wait till next year. Okay. Are you gonna do it? No. See. I think I would only do it maybe if I'd like if I'd found the star or it had some personal connection to it. Then I might. What is a star? What is a star? Well, I know you're looking at one, but what is a star <laughs> up in the solar system? <laughs> but I'm bum, ching. Well, stars are, <laughs> it's like our sun. It's a mass of, of plasma and gas, usually really light stuff like hydrogen and helium. But over time, those burn and, and generate higher elements. So actually, all of the stuff, Carl Sagan was famous for saying this, that we're all star stuff. All of the atoms in your body right now, yeah. everything from the air you breathe to the, the carbon and the calcium that makes up your bones was all formed in a star somewhere so in the universe. So everybody's a star. Everyone is, or at least a piece of a star. And could you land on a star? Mm, no. That they're really, really hot. So at yeah. night time, you could land at night. <laughs> but, but, but they're big, they're big though, right? They're very large. Obviously yeah. different sizes because some you see bigger or brighter than others, or is that... Am I getting? No, you're exactly right. They range in sizes and in temperatures, too. Some of them burn a lot hotter and a lot longer than others. Mm. And so that's one thing that when we look for planets that might have life elsewhere in the universe, we seriously consider the star it's around. Because some of them, maybe they're really young and planets haven't had time to form in, in some of those solar systems out there. Or maybe the star is really old and it's kind of burning itself out. What if there was a civilization around a star that was about to die? What would it do? So we think about those things, too. Yeah. Oh. Very good. What you got there, Shovel? Well, this is fascinating with Morgan Cable from NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, but we are going to be qualifying somebody for today's $1,000 giveaway, Steve. We're coming back to Earth for a second. Yeah, sorry to bring you down. Uh, we're going to take the 25th caller at 800-955-KLOS when they hear the signal. What, what signal is that, Mr. Shovel? Yeah, what's the signal? <coughs> that's a signal. It can't you. be a space signal. That's, a sig oh. that's it. No, <laughs> pe people are programmed to listen to okay, that. That's, that's some right. of Jonesy's gaseous body. Yeah, that's my gas. Hey, my that's space all, gas. That's bacteria, right? Mm -hmm. That's all good stuff. We're looking for bacteria on other worlds. Yeah, microbes. Yeah. <sighs> so we're going to give away Metallica's new album, Hardwired to Self Destruct. Furnished by Q Prime, and then that person's going into the running for today's $1,000. All right. Are you in any rush, or are you going to hang around for a while? I am not in a rush. Because we're going to play some music and come back and talk to you again. That sounds great. Um, let's play some Rolling Stones. Not to be uh, typical, but 2,000 light years. Take it away, son. <laughs> 